Man, I really hope this game has something for my giant-ass fetish. Oh. My. God. If my voice sounds a little strange for this video, it's because I'm getting over a cold. But we gotta power through this because I gotta get this shit done before I go on vacation. Apparently Ashen was a game that a lot of people were looking forward to. I hadn't even heard of it until someone mentioned in the comments of one of my videos a couple of days before release, so I went into this game with absolutely no idea what to expect. That being said, the game is great, and I think definitely worth the time for any fan of the Souls-like genre. If you've been in South America on an ayahuasca spirit journey for the last seven years, a Souls-like is a subgenre of ARPG popularized by Dark Souls that is characterized by fairly open-world exploration, unforgiving combat, and RPG-style character progression usually stacked on top of cryptic storytelling. And that last point about storytelling is going to be our starting point for Ashen. The name of the genre would imply that Ashen would be derivative of the Souls series, but it's particularly derivative in the department of the narrative. Probably a little bit too derivative. The intro opens with an explanation of some conflict between light and dark, and a few deities and gods or whatever. It's clear that the goal here, and really across the game's entire delivery of the story via NPC interactions and quest lines, was to replicate the feeling of the first Dark Souls. But for some reason it really just comes off as more nonsensical. I know that a lot of people have accused the first Dark Souls of essentially just being fantasy babble, and I think that's true for the second and third games, but the first one is significantly more coherent. Maybe it's nostalgia, but for some reason the writing and dialogue in Dark Souls feels like it has a lot more legitimacy to it. It could be because the first few lines of Dark Souls are the same as the first few lines in the Bible and that triggers my dumb, fundamentalist American brain to enjoy it. And now that I'm thinking about it, there might be something to that. Like, kind of like how Lovecraft read through the King James Bible and intentionally let it influence his writing style. It could just be that Dark Souls was the first one, but there has to be some kind of reason that examining the Souls series and its story launched the careers of like two dozen content creators. Ashen also has fairly weak voice acting, which I think deals a little bit of damage to the efforts of anyone trying to take this narrative seriously. When I protected Geffen from the Koto, the Elder Dark broke it. Nearby in the forest, the vagrants make a glue that could make it whole again. What are you saying? So I think the writing and storytelling in this game are pretty weak, but that's fine. Let me give you a hot gamer tip. If you're playing a video game, there is about a 98% chance the writing is laughably terrible. And that doesn't really matter because a video game isn't a book. Sure, it would be nice if every game had the writing of To Kill a Mockingbird as well as engaging in creative gameplay, but writing is hard, making a game is hard, and sometimes you need to make a sacrifice, and telling a story with words and dialogue has never really been the point of a video game. If you want to tell a story, you need to tell it in a way that only a video game can, otherwise make a movie or write a novel. Let me immediately move on from what might seem like to some as me shitting on this game relentlessly to talking about all the stuff I loved about Ashen, starting with the art style. Ashen's art style is what I would describe as deceptively minimalist. At first glance, you might see the faceless characters with mitten hands and think you're about to get into some mess of an indie game with a relatively unskilled art team. But then you start noticing all of the fine, subtle details all over everything, and you realize that these visuals aren't simple because the artist wasn't skilled. They actually aren't simple at all. The artist just wanted you to believe that they were. This sort of art style you also see in Necropolis, which is probably why Ashen was mentioned in the comments of that video. This is the style that I hope I can replicate in my own 3D art someday. I think the best way to illustrate the philosophy of this game's art style is through its feet. You see, if you're a hack artist, like the guys who did Necropolis, or me, if you're tasked with creating and animating a low-poly model, you might think, man, I really don't want to animate feet, I just won't model them. But in Ashen, they modeled feet so small that the animation becomes irrelevant. You get all the benefits of having feet, and none of the detriments. 
This is probably the best foot-related development choice I've personally ever seen. Anyway, I'll talk a bit more about art direction later on when I start talking about level design, but for now, let's get into how the game feels mechanically. In any Souls-like, you can more or less split the gameplay into two categories. Combat and exploration. You're always either fighting something or searching for hidden items. Let's start with Ashen's combat. First and foremost, in terms of its genre, Ashen is a fairly easy game. This is fine because difficulty isn't really as much of a mainstay in the Dark Souls series as people claim. The Dark Souls series isn't particularly hard, and that's not me trying to get epic gamer cred. There are plenty of games harder than Dark Souls. Dust Force is harder than Dark Souls, and that game is about sweeping the floor. The Souls series and the entire subgenre that it spawned aren't hard games, they just demand your attention. The second you stop paying attention, you die. That's why people that don't like the genre will always describe it as tedious. So what makes Ashen's combat easier? Well, most enemies have pretty predictable attack animations, and the iframes on your dodge are pretty forgiving. You usually also have the benefit of having an AI partner, or if you're lucky, another player, but I'll talk more about that when I get to the multiplayer section. To compensate for easier dodges, most enemies will hit you like a train if their hits actually land. I was wearing the heaviest armor I could find for my playthrough, and there were plenty of times where I got one or two shot by enemies. If you really wanted to play this game for difficulty, you could disable the AI companion and the multiplayer, and do a completely solo run. You could even do this on the Children of Cessna setting, which gives you decreased health and stamina but you should go into it knowing that this game is very clearly balanced for two characters. Unlike most Souls-likes, there are plenty of times in Ashen where you'll be fighting four or more enemies, and that might get a little annoying solo. Ashen's bosses are also pretty easy, all things considered. I was able to get through every boss except for the final one on my first try, and that's not me bragging. I'm not very good at games. It's just clear that Ashen wasn't designed to be the big boy hard game. None of what I just said is inherently bad, by the way. A game doesn't need to be difficult to be good. Ashen also makes an attempt to add a little bit more depth to the combat than just fast swing small damage or slow swing big damage. The first attempt at this is the Relic Talisman system, which is probably this game's biggest missed opportunity. As you play through the game, you unlock a few relics and a bunch of talismans, which add passive bonuses to your character. You can equip up to 4 talismans and 1 relic. The huge majority of the talismans are just boring stat bonuses, and out of the very small amount of relics in the game, only one really adds any difference to your playstyle, I guess debatably too. To make this even more frustrating, it seems like the first relic you get is by far the strongest in combat. So unless you're playing dress up, it's going to be the one you feel compelled to use the most. I could sit here for hours and list examples of armchair game developer ideas for what the relics and talismans could have been, but I find that kind of thing to be a waste of time. Developing a game isn't that simple. I'm sure A44 had lofty goals when they started working on the system and just didn't have the time to hash it out completely. It's definitely a weak spot, but it isn't a critical flaw. The second attempt at spicing up the game's combat, though, actually did work very well, and I enjoyed it a lot. This has to do with weapon slots. In most Souls games, you have two or three weapon slots that you can use to swap from one weapon to another quickly during combat. The problem is, switching weapons doesn't really have that much of a point most of the time. In this genre, upgrading a weapon usually requires a pretty heavy investment, so you're very unlikely to want to upgrade two or three weapons to their highest tier. Dark Souls has a magic system that makes the slots make a little bit more sense because you might want to swap to a caster item to throw some spells around, but in terms of melee weapons, you're probably going to pick the one you want and stick with it. This is compounded by the fact that after a certain level of experience with these games, one-handed weapons feel a lot less useful. After a while, enemy attacks become pretty predictable, and you start to feel like it's a lot more efficient to dodge an attack with a heavy weapon for insane damage than to block and go in with a quicker but weaker one-handed weapon. To summarize, in this genre, if you're familiar with the game, you're probably not going to carry more than one melee weapon, and it's probably going to be two-handed. Obviously, probably about 85% of the community just picks whatever weapons and armor looks cool and then makes it work because these are single-player games and balance and strategy don't really matter as much as having fun, but theoretically, this holds true. 
back to Ashen, which gives you two weapon slots. A one-handed slot and a two-handed slot. Two-handed weapons actually attack pretty fast in Ashen, so you aren't sacrificing very much of your speed. So the problem of making one-handed weapons useful is even harder. But this game has a great solution. The game's world is split into two types of areas. You have the overworld areas, which are brightly lit and colorful, and then you have caves, which are extremely dark and require your lantern. The catch is, you can't use a two-handed weapon while holding a lantern. What this effectively does is, creates a scenario where you have your two-handed weapon for when it's bright out and you can actually see, and then you have your one-handed weapon for when you need to go splunking. Having light areas and dark areas where you need to slightly adjust your playstyle accordingly to adapt to your environment is not only just a good choice mechanically, but it also plays up that whole light versus dark theme that for some reason these games always want to try to have. Now, before someone starts to furiously type a comment down below about how you can set the lantern on the ground and switch to your two-handed weapons in the dark, I'm aware of this. The problem is that first you need to put the lantern down, which is a long-ass animation, and then you need to fight, then you need to pick the lantern back up, and on top of all of this, for the overwhelming majority of the game, you only have access to the basic lantern, which has a comically small light radius. So if you need to move around or reposition yourself a lot during a fight, you're going to be in the dark pretty quick. It's very clear that you're incentivized to carry the lantern, and if it was up to me to design this, I probably wouldn't even have given the player the option to drop it. That basically covers combat and Ashen from the player's perspective. It's a little more forgiving for its genre, but it does try to offer you a little bit of variability. Honestly, you can't really get stun locked, and you have quite a few healing items, so a lot of the time you're just going to bite down on your mouthpiece and swing wildly until everything is dead and then heal. But in any combat system, the enemies that you're fighting are equally as important as what you can do as a player. Ashen's enemy design isn't that great. It's not bad, but it's not going to blow your mind. The biggest problem with the way this game handles its enemies comes from enemy placement. There are a few areas where enemies are very awkwardly placed under ladders, so you can't really climb down without getting hit. But by far, the most frustrating part of enemy design in this game is the cartoonish level of ambush enemies. You need to be operator as fuck like you're in a CSGO tournament around every corner in the game, or it's going to catch up with you eventually. I could see this being very annoying for some people, but like I said, the enemy design is pretty average in its execution. Next I want to move on from combat and into exploration. If you have millennial brain, and you don't remember what the fuck I'm talking about, I'll remind you. Earlier I said that Souls-like games can be split into two sections of gameplay, combat and exploration. Now I'm only going to do that once, so take some Adderall and pay attention. The reason Ashen turns down the dial on combat is because it turns the dial way up on exploration. When I first started Ashen, I was very impressed with how rich and detailed the starting area was. It's very common for a developer to spend a ton of time polishing the first couple areas in a game so that it gives a good first impression. This is so hack reviewers who only play a game for 30 minutes and then write a one-page article for a garbage blog will give the game a good review, and also so that the positive experience of the first couple hours of the game hopefully carries the player through some of the less polished areas. At first I was sure there was no way a small studio could sustain the level of density and detail that was present in the first area of Ashen. I was wrong. This game's level design is fucking bananas. Every single area in the game, without exception, is packed full of random hidden items and enemies and varying pathways for you to progress through the area. Even places like these plains are deceptively dense despite how empty they look. This level of detail makes exploring the world very satisfying. You never know when you're going to find some random secret weapon or armor. To top this off, Ashen also allows you to jump and climb over objects, which adds a completely new third dimension that traditional Souls-like games don't have. You're always looking upwards to figure out a way to climb on top of a rock face or a tall building. This gets expanded on even more in the middle of the game when you get the ability to throw spears at these statues to warp to them. All of this detail and extra verticality when it comes to exploring is extremely satisfying. You'll constantly be trying to climb to a higher spot to scan the area for items you might have missed, and the freedom of movement offered by being able to jump and climb also adds some instances where you can take shortcuts that the developers absolutely did not intend. 
The best one I found is a spot in this cave where you can skip to the bottom floor by finagling some bullshit jumps off of these random wall platforms. Of course, there's the problem of occasionally finding yourself in the unfortunate situation of playing an awkward game of, can I jump to this? Each new area you get to in Ashen is a meticulously detailed and colorful jungle gem of exploration, and it's great. I'm sure some people will complain about the lack of item variation or something, and that's fair criticism. If different weapons and armors had some more stats to offer, or if those relics and talismans from earlier were items you could find in the world that would help tie combat together with exploration, it would be better. But your character progression is tied somewhat to exploration in the form of these feathers you can find scattered around the world, which give you small, permanent health and stamina increases. Overall, exploring the world is very well done. The area that I'm about to enter in this clip is particularly amazing, but I'm going to leave that surprise to people who actually play the game. The only gripe I have with exploring in Ashen is the inventory system is a goddamn curse. Unlike in the Soul series, in Ashen your character has a limited inventory, so sometimes you'll be in the middle of making your way through a particularly rich area, only to fill your inventory and have to go back to dump some stuff and then lose track of where you were at on the map once you return. On top of that, your item stash back at your hometown is also limited, which is insane and makes no sense. You absolutely can pick up too many items to fill this box, I know because I did and I'm 100% sure I missed some. Ashen's map has an overall linear progression from point A to point B with checkpoints scattered around in important spots. So at a certain point, if you're low on supplies, you either need to back off to a checkpoint or take a risk and push through to the next one. This means that players already have enough of a job to do managing their choices during combat and their healing items as they explore, and there is really no reason to add inventory management on top of this. All of that covers the single player portion of Ashen. It's very well made. If the idea of a fairly relaxed version of classic Souls-like combat and exploring a colorful world in dark atmospheric caves appeals to you, then you'll get your money's worth out of Ashen. But as I'm sure many of you know, one of Ashen's main selling points was its inclusion of what's known as passive multiplayer. Passive multiplayer is a concept that was popularized by an indie game that came out back in 2012 called Journey. How this works is, as you play through the game, other players will passively connect to your world and help you, or just fuck off. The idea is to replicate a game world where people passively meet each other and interact, instead of actively making a lobby or connecting to each other's games intentionally, how you would expect in a traditional multiplayer game. But, before I go any further into how this system is implemented in Ashen, I need to talk about the game's various NPCs. I know this seems like a complete non sequitur, but trust me, it's gonna loop back around. In Ashen, you start by clearing out a piece of land with a couple allied NPCs, and over time they build structures while you quest, and turn it into a legitimate town. As you progress, you meet a cast of other NPCs that will join you in town and offer you different crafting options, as well as giving you access to their side quests. Every NPC has a quest line, and you can keep track of all the quests you have on the map. As you explore, one of these NPCs will join you to fight, and it's usually whichever one gave you the quest you are currently tracking. I really enjoyed this detail. In most games, an NPC just hands you a quest and sits on their ass and waits for you to do all the work. In Ashen, an NPC says, Hey, I'm gonna go fucking kill a guy today, are you in or out? This also helps to actually make the player feel more of a connection to characters in the game. This would have been a lot stronger if the writing wasn't so bad, but it is what it is. So, how does all this connect back to the multiplayer? Well, when other players randomly connect to your world, they take the form of one of these NPCs. This system was implemented very poorly, and there were tons of connection problems on launch which were supposedly patched at some point. Over the course of my playthrough, I connected to another person exactly three times. Twice were in the same area towards the end of the game, and once was during a fight with the last boss, which I won't reveal because it's a massive spoiler, where I was out of healing items, and my AI ally died, and a player, sent from God, descended into the game on a ray of sunlight and killed the boss right before I was about to get mangled. So obviously the problems this multiplayer system had at launch aren't going to bode well for the reception that players have, but in general, 
is passive multiplayer good? I personally think passive multiplayer is the result of some art house game designer having an art idea without considering how it's actually going to work out down the line. We want people to feel like they're playing with strangers, dude. Because, like, we're all just drifters moving through this life, man. Like, we're all just strangers. The first problem with passive multiplayer is you have a very, very small window of time to experience it, and then that window is gone once a game dies. Boot up Journey on your PS3 in 2018, and you'll find that the multiplayer elements are significantly lacking. Now, the art house types will tell you that having to be there in the moment for a passing experience that then fades into the ether is part of the charm, and they're right, but they're also excluding potential fans of their games in the future. The second problem with passive multiplayer is, you have to assume that your player is going to have the option to play with other people, so the game needs to be partially balanced around that. In Ashen, that takes the form of fairly large groups of enemies, and most bosses spawning smaller enemies during the fight. All of this noise makes the game a lot more manageable with two people. But you also have to assume that your player might be playing this game five years after release, so you need to make the game technically possible to complete solo, which is where the AI companions in Ashen come in. They usually function pretty well, but also do a lot of the things that you would expect from an AI, like randomly getting stuck in the middle of nowhere and having no way of saving you while you're downed. So, what has happened here is, by choosing to implement passive multiplayer, what you've done is forced yourself to design your game around a half-assed version of single player and a half-assed version of multiplayer, instead of going all in on one or the other. Usually in game design, if you try to go the half and half route, the result will almost always be worse than choosing one choice or the other. And finally, the third problem with passive multiplayer is people just straight up don't like it. They want to play with their friends, and they want to do it quickly and easily. They don't want to fuck around with your art degree garbage. I can't really tell you if the multiplayer component of Ashen is good or bad, because probably less than three minutes of my entire playthrough were spent connected to another person, but what I can tell you is that if you never connect to another person once in your entire playthrough, the game will still be good. The multiplayer feels tacked on, and Ashen would have greatly benefited from either going all in on co-op, or going all in on single player. So that's Ashen. It's a great game, and you should buy it. I know some people have a problem with it only being exclusively available through the Epic Games launcher, but don't fucking act like you don't have it installed already for Fortnite. Also, stop acting like you could tell the difference between a good launcher and a bad launcher, you fucking maniac. Although, they did advertise this game on Steam and then only release it on the Epic Launcher, which, as this guy put it, is a lot like sitting in a McDonald's eating Burger King. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. You should also follow me on Twitter so you don't miss any important updates. I also have a second channel where I sometimes upload a comedy podcast and some other gaming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.